All right, thank y'all. Um, one uh, one thing, and I can't remember if we do this live or not, but we had a student appreciation day today, and man, we got a lot of we got a lot of students that uh, that are part of this. I think sometimes we lose um, track, but from a from just a student perspective, is you know equipment managers, uh, student trainers, um, nutrition staff, video staff. Um, our creative people, um, our student football coaches, and then people that help in recruiting. So we've got a lot of undergrads that are here that that help this thing run, and they do a really good job. So recognize them in front of the team today. So I, I want to do that in front of you all as, as well. Um, in the stadium today, we uh, we went, you know, probably uh, between 40 and 50 total snaps with the ones and the twos, and about 20 with the threes. A um, little light on D-line numbers, so we, we didn't go as many uh, with the threes. Um, and then we did some special teams competition. Um, during the spring, we split them up into to four special teams groups, and that's all the offensive skill and mids, defensive skill, defensive mids. And uh, they're on four teams, and and we do competitions throughout, and they earn points. And so we did that today in the stadium. We had a full Big 12 officiating crew here, so um, – uh, we got some really solid work with with the competition and the punt. You know, uh, um, Ollie Straw is continuing to build off off a really good freshman season, and then Leighton, Leighton Bechtel, who uh, is the backup punter, he's he's had a really strong spring. So I wanted to recognize him, and then Austin Brinkman. I think he continues to he's got a chance to be as good as anybody in the country long snapping. Um, Field goal competition is, is ongoing. You know, Michael Hayes has done some really good things. Uh, didn't have his best day today in the stadium. And then Danny King is is continuing to show some growth and really putting pressure on him. So um, I'll start, you know, just talking about the scrimmage aspect of it. Uh, I'll start on defense. And uh, Mike Lockhart and, and Hammond Russell, th both those guys, we need them. They're probably uh, as integral – for us is is anybody on either side as far as needing to make a jump this spring and and they have through 12 12 practices four weeks you know they've they've gotten better and um they've not arrived yet but you know i thought both of those guys did some nice things bartlett had a couple sacks on third downs uh one uh particular inside a two minute drill that they really uh um his team won and then James Hurd, natural pass rusher, probably as natural a pass rusher as we've recruited. Um, he, he'll be a factor for us. He'll play in the fall. Uh, line, linebacker, I think Lee Koba is probably um, maybe – I don't say – he from from where he was last spring to where he is this spring, he's made the most improvement. Um, I think he's got a chance to be an all-league type player. Um, Trey Lathan is a guy that, that played well today. Uh, had a couple of nice plays in short yardage. And then Jai Favaris is really grown into kind of one of those special teams core players and in, in, in doing some nice things on defense. Uh, defensive back-wise, I think Marcus Floyd had a nice day. Had a couple good open field tackles, one on uh, CJ in particular. Um, uh, Wilson Lamp uh, made a couple nice plays on the ball, um, which is good. It's kind of time for him, you know, and he's he, he, he had a nice day. Uh, Keyshawn Cobb, transfer, um, played – as many snaps as we could get him today, and he'll be a factor. He'll be pushing for a starting job there in the secondary. And and Lance Dixon quietly has had a had a nice spring. We're playing him on the uh, out in space, kind of where he finished last year, and he's getting more accustomed to that. And and he's growing, growing is you know kind of on and off the field. So so proud of what he's doing. Uh, offensively, I'll start with the quarterbacks. I know that's you know y'all probably as as much as anything y'all want to hear. Um, just talk about each of them individually. Garrett, I'll talk about him first. Is and we're just alternating these guys. So they went some with the ones and some with the twos. So uh, as I talk about them, just know that could have been with the ones, could have been with the twos. But um, he had he had three explosive runs. Uh, you know, one probably sixty plus yards, um, and then threw the deep ball very well today. Um, two that are really fresh in my mind on 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 go balls, and then. Um, Made a couple of mistakes in on third down. You know, got to got to have some situational awareness. Got to have some field awareness where he's at. Um, took a sack that he probably shouldn't have, um, but some explosive plays. You know, and 
scrambled around and did some nice things too on, on some broken plays. Nico had two nice drives, and what I mean by that is he converted multiple third downs. Um, and you know we forget, you know he's in his second spring. He's a redshirt freshman. Um, he's right in the middle of this thing, but he's young. And today I thought he just made the simple decisions. You know, you know I think a lot of a lot of times in football it's you know not getting yourself beat. And he didn't – on those two drives, especially early in practice, he just made good decisions. If it was a handoff, he handed it off, right? Third down completion, not taking sacks. Um, just did a did a nice job and in, in showing some some maturation there, which um, is good to see. You know, I thought wide out, uh, Jay Sean Polk uh, has had a nice week. And so he's been a little bit um, battling a, a leg injury, but he was healthy this week and um, – while we got him, got an opportunity to be a, a factor in the return game and then get him the ball where he can make some explosive plays and he can run. And so he had a nice day. Devin Carter, I haven't talked about him in a little bit, but he's he's been really consistent. And then tight end, uh, Cole Taylor and Will Dixon both had some nice catches, especially down in the red zone, uh, which is something we need. And then I thought uh, all four of the running backs did some good stuff. CJ went full, full today. Um, had a couple – was really good in our short yardage period. Um, I thought Tony Mathis may have had his best day of the spring. And then and then Jalen and Justin both uh, had, some, had some nice runs. And, and Justin's getting really comfortable of reading some of our run plays. So, all four of those guys had, had a nice day. We've got um, – so, Tuesday and Thursday we'll get after pretty good. And then we'll, we'll have some fun on Saturday for the spring game. So, that's kind of that's kind of run down. Y'all, y'all ask questions. Greg. So I, I won't pound you on Jimmy Bill, but I got to ask a couple yeah, of questions. Fair. So first of all, what what have you seen about him, and mm-hmm. have you ever had a basketball player? Yeah, we've had. Yeah, mm-hmm. we did when I was a coordinator at Troy. We had one, mm-hmm. and uh, and so you know, I'm trying to keep uh, expectations within reason, right? Um, so the things that that Jimmy has that are natural is, and I think there's there is some. Um, crossover between uh, what he's asked to do in basketball and playing offensive line, okay, and, and playing some tight end. Um, you know, pass pro is not, you know, when they, you know, people started picking, playing the pick and roll game, he had to guard the guy out on the perimeter. That's not too much different than playing uh, playing or pass pro. You know, you got to keep a smaller guy in front of you. All right, so there's some crossover. Um, obviously, um, the biggest difference – is we can use our hands in this game, you know. And Coach Moore tells, and I've heard him say it multiple times this week, hey, you're not fouling out. There ain't no foul outs in this game, right? So just him getting used to punching and, and the importance of ball get off. Um, and so what I do like about him, he's extremely coachable. And and Hug said he was, and he, he definitely is extremely coachable. Um, he works hard. Um, you know, I think he's had an open mind on this. And I went into it with with zero expectations, you know. And what I told him is, hey, let's let's teach you. And, and he's played football, all right. So this isn't like, hey, um, we're rolling out there and playing football for the first time. You know, he's played football. It hasn't. It's been since 16 or 17. Last time he played, uh, he played as a junior in high school. His last year he played. He got recruited some. You know, he obviously he, he was also about 60 pounds heavier. Um, and, but when he went to prep school out in Arizona, they didn't have football, and he just played basketball, and he's been playing since. So he has some knowledge of playing the game. But we, we went two weeks and just did fundamentals, you know, and just trying to get him. And we did some cardio things because it's different. Um, and then this week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, he's he's practiced. And we're going to do the same next Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday and and give us some time to regroup and, and see if it's something that, that we think can work or he thinks that he wants to make happen, you know, and I just try to keep expectations and reason. It's a really tough transition, um, but he, he's, he's attacked it. And so he, he went today, probably, I don't have it in front of him, but I'm betting, betting he probably went 25 plays live within an 11 on 11 period and, and did some pass protection and, and some inside drill as well. Um, and he's getting better. Like you can see like considerable growth since Tuesday. Position and was any good? Yeah, I'm not going to answer any of that. <laughs> okay, that tells us. Never mind. <laughs> uh, you mentioned Lee Koba. This one looks better. I'm glad I'll say that. I'll say that. 
Lee Koba, you mentioned most improved. What specifically is? Yeah, he's body control. He's controlling his body. Um, he's, you know, being comfortable in the scheme is so important too. And he's, he feels uh, very confident. But his body control, you know, he uh, he has less wasted movement. You know, he's a, he's a box linebacker, and he's not running himself out of plays. Uh, he's reading his keys better. You know, I think he's just more comfortable. He's playing playing with more confidence. With with him now, the backup situation a little bit more in mm -hmm. question with with Josiah's injury. So, uh, what's the depth look like yeah. at that position? Yeah, I feel I feel pretty good about that, Greg. Really, we got uh, Trey Lathan is there. Um, you got Caden Beiser, who has grown into where he can play. You know, we we. Y'all didn't ask about him much, but we, we, we stole some snaps with him last year uh, playing in there. And so, um, you know, I feel, I feel like we're, we're going to be fine from a depth perspective. We played him too much last year, and that was out of necessity. You know, he had to play almost every snap. You know, you'd like for him to play about two-thirds of the snap, and I think that, that will help him. And Ben Cutter play there, too? Ben can. Yeah, we're playing him at will right now, but he definitely could play there. Yeah, he definitely, he definitely can play there. Really trying to cross train right now, Keenan, all, all those guys. Just using the spring and just – we probably hadn't done as good a job of that in the past, but we're being intentional about it right now. It's just double training, but, you know, where they know Mike and Will both. Now you've talked all spring about receiver, uh, like, uh, running backs mm -hmm. as, as catching the ball. Can you categorize the four elements of the mm -hmm. level, Well, level yeah. Are? Well, the easy thing on that is, uh, is like – so CJ's got ball skills. He played receiver. You know, Jalen, they used him – Jalen Anderson, they used him a bunch in empty. You know, so he caught the ball a lot in high school. And Jalen's got a basketball background. You know, he played basketball. I mean, I think that's really good for hand-eye coordination. You know, and he was an above-average basketball player. So, very se very seldom do you ever see a basketball player that's above average that struggles catching the ball, right? Um, and then – and Justin and Tony, neither were asked to do that in high school. But – They've been in the program long enough now where they're plus hands guy. They they can run routes. Um, very similar progression like Letty. Letty wasn't asked to do that in high school, kind of got better at it each and every year. If you remember, his last year, you know, we played him. We ran routes with him. You know, he had a bunch of catches his last two years. And I think that's a similar progression that Justin and Tony both have had. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. But I do. I, mean, I, I do think our our receiving numbers are going to be considerably more than they were a year ago. Yeah, I do. But I don't. I, receivers will still have more. I'm hoping, you know, our tight end numbers are going to be up as well. For them, they've got both of them have that ability, right? And so, it starts with ability. They both have it. Um, they both worked hard on their conditioning, which was a factor. Pad leverage. You know, both of them um, are tall, but, you know, they they have the ability to play low. It's just having to do it repeatedly, right, which goes back to that conditioning piece. Um, but both are talented. Uh, they've got uh, – they use their hands well. Um, and they're doing a better job versus double teams. You know, a lot of what we, what, what we ask them to do is, is take some heat off the linebackers, and they're understanding their job, right? Your job not all the time to make the play. It's so somebody else can make the play. Right, and I think they're having a better understanding of that. You came into the spring realizing you had to add some pieces if possible to certain positions. Any positions now you feel like maybe you don't have to, or maybe some that have popped up that you know I have to add here. Yeah, I think O line wise, and I don't, I don't mean we won't add, but like today, like uh, Sullivan Weedman, Sully, Sully had a really good day, you know. So I feel feel good about him going in, you know. You know, probably similar to where Tomas was about this time a year ago. So I feel better about him. You know, the, uh, you know, Dylan Ray's had a nice spring. I think he's getting to a point where, where he can be a factor. Nick Malone continues to come on. So, you know, offensive line wise, I think I feel better about our depth now than I did at the start. You know, linebacker, which we already talked about, is another position where I think those guys, you know, coming into it. And I'm not saying we won't add anybody, but, you know, I'm more and more comfortable with what we have. You know the same the same spots that, that I said. You know that's you know we need we need uh, probably one more wide out. 
we need a we need a, at least a D lineman, and you know we've we've seen you know kind of what we're doing at corner. You pleased with how the O line has functioned without Frazier this spring? You know, we, well we've kind of so Milo missed some time. You know, Doug's missed a little bit of time because he was sick, and so and then Frazier has not been out there. Uh, so yeah, you know, I, th I think you try to find the silver lining in all of it. So the silver lining when Fra with Frazier, first of all, is Doug Nestor is his leadership ability is has really grown and he's kind of been pushed and and Wyatt Milam's been pushed out of his shell a little bit where he's having to speak more. So I think those are long term really, really good things. Um and what it does is it forces you as a coach when you've had some guys out. Like Brandon Yates has had a great spring. He's had a great spring. Uh he's played all inside and man he's done a really good job. I'm really excited for him and what the fall looks like for him. Um but as a coach, like with Wyatt, Wyatt missed on Tuesday and Thursday. Well, you know, that causes you to, you know, it forces you to, you know, for guys to get reps versus the best players we got. And so in long in the long run, that helps, right? You know, and, and so I feel I, because those guys have missed some time, you know, we've had to put our younger guys out there versus the ones, and I'm probably more comfortable now than, than maybe even I assumed we would be uh, at the start. Goods come out of a bad. Yeah, it has. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It seems like every time you talk to a defensive player, they're really confident about the group despite you know, what was lost and yeah. what's going on. Are you comfortable with what you've seen throughout the spring in terms of what you wanted to see throughout the spring and the whole going back to the basics plan? Mm -hmm. and is there even a possibility that despite losing Dante and others, that this group would even who may come in? Through the portal could even maybe yeah. have an athletic edge because they're a little smaller. In some yeah. Positions, but well, we better be better. You know what I mean? <laughs> like the the bar is pretty low for that too. So we better we better be better than we were a year ago. Um, like where's your satisfaction level? I guess, yeah. So the here's the thing. Like if you're looking at it, it's hard to look at it from the whole perspective to the end, right? So um, we're faster on defense. Um, fundamentally, um, we are better. Um, in tackling today, we tackled better in that stadium. Um, definitely improved over where we were two weeks ago, first time we went really live. Um, you know, some of those questions, I, I'm not going to be able to answer you until we go and play games, right? Um, I'm, I'm very confident that we're going to be better than we were a year ago. Um, will we miss Dante? Yes, Dante's a great player. He's going to get drafted. Like, we will – we are definitely going to miss him. Um but do I think we'll we'll be better as a defense overall? Absolutely. You know, I have full confidence in that. I think fundamentally, first of all, our pad level is better. Where our angles and 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 our strain to get to the ball is better. Uh, we're doing a better job of shedding blocks, which is very very important. Something that we were below average at last year. So, um, yeah, I think we're progressing. I'm not saying we've arrived, but we're progressing. What's your thought of your cornerback situation? Yeah, so, you know, I think if you look at it, um, Montre, he's had some some ups and downs. You know, he can run. I think the more comfortable he gets in the system, he's going to be um, – I think he's going to be a solid Big 12 player for us. And that's what we thought when we took him from Kent State. Um, great guy, works. He's hungry. Um, Lamp and Spells are both growing. You know, I think that uh, those are the two guys that we really need to make a move. You know, and, and there's been some ups and some downs in the spring, but I think those guys are going to be guys we can count on to play. Uh, Malachi continues like, you know, Malachi Ruffin played good football for us at the end of the year. You know, he made that the one bo really boneheaded play that went viral <laughs> against Oklahoma State, but he also made two hell of a plays at the end of the Oklahoma State game too. Um, and, and he really played pretty solid football. Um, and so he's always going to be kind of a steady guy there. You know, and we've added we've added uh, a player, um, and and we may even add another one. Maybe not at corner, but in the secondary. You know, may add another one. You mentioned Jared Bartlett. Uh, how has he come along with consistency? You feel like he's at the point now. Mm -hmm. He's playing some of his less football. He's playing the run better. You know, he's playing the run better. I think he has less wasted movement. He had a he had a good winter. Um, he's put on some weight. I mean, he uh, I can't remember when he. I think he talked to you all at some point, but. He's put on some good weight. He, uh, when I say wasted movement, less false steps. Um, he's using his hands better. Um, he's setting up 
some of our movement stuff that we do with him. He's setting it up better, a little more patient, which comes with maturity. Um, I'm pleased with him where he is. Like he and Lee Koba um, made some real solid gains. What's the uh, format of the spring game going to be like? I don't know yet. I ain't got there. So that's, I'm going to work on that tomorrow. <laughs> I was actually going to ask you. I'm sure you've seen some coaches have changed up their format this year. Yeah. The spring game, some are going offense, defense, straight, not doing drafts anymore. What are your thoughts? I guess so, I give it away now. But no, no, like uh, it's it's open. That's how I left the staff meeting this morning for we went to position meetings. I said, okay, so like y'all have a day, one day. When we come back together on Monday morning. Like I want all your ideas for uh, for spring game. Yeah, here's the thing that's changed about spring games, that they're all TV. They're on TV. And so everybody has access to them. So everybody that we play at the early part of the year, first thing they're going to do is pull out what we did in the spring game. And so from a coaching perspective, like you always got to think about that. All right. And then I'll, what I always think about a spring game is, okay, if I was coming to watch a spring game, like what would I want to see? Well, I want to see some 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 type of competition, right? Um, we're going to do some things that are interactive, you know, um, with some with some kids and things like that, because I think that adds to it. Um, and then some real football, you know. Now we're not going to go out there and play four quarters of real football, but um, you know, so we're uh, and y'all. If y'all got any good ideas, tell Monty too. Maybe we can use y'all's ideas. Because cancel it, right? huh? some coaches cancel this, you're not going to cancel. No, no, we're not, we're not, we're not canceling it. But I do understand why they do. Um, it, it, coaches in general are paranoid, so like they get paranoid about the TV deal, like um, which I do understand. What I do think, you know, I think they're they're it's good. You think you just think about it, like if you're a family and you come to a spring game, all right. Well, you're going to get, let's say that. You know, you don't have you. You don't get to come to games during the fall for whatever reason. Um, you get really good seats, and there's a good chance you might have some chance to interact with players. You know, like, um, and so I think there's a there's definitely a a place for them. You know, I I I'm more on a I, I want them to be fun. I want them. I look at them as we got 14 practices as coaches, and they get to that one for. So we're going. We'll try to make it fun. Do you ever think of it in, in the mindset as an opposing coach? Like, for example, Pitts doing a offense defense type of thing this year. You play him early in the year. Obviously, they're going to have to play games by that point. But do you ever think like, hmm, I'm going to get more by watching that than if they did it the old way? Like, there's some to that, Mike. Some to that. Yep, there's some to that. You get a couple fullbacks. You, you've not always used that in the yeah. past. What, what were your thoughts? Can you can you use fullbacks this yep. year? What are you thought of what you got? Yeah, so getting big soccer updates here. So if you look at me, yeah, we're down in Charleston playing soccer. So um, we, uh, you know, those kids are, we're getting them reps. And we played with a fullback all the time at Troy because we couldn't, we didn't, we really, really struggled to recruit tight ends at, there and at that level. Uh, so we used a fullback a lot. Uh, we've got two, Luke Hamilton who's a natural fullback. And then Colin McBee is – he's just a football player from right here in town. Like he's, a good, he's a good football player. He uh, he can he can block, and he's – we're trying to get him bigger where he can be a fullback. But um, we still hand him the ball a good bit. And and I really believe – I don't know about this fall, but at some point he's going to be somebody that plays for us. Um, but Luke and Colin are both playing that fullback role. And, and I do think – how big a role to be determined, but I think – both those guys can do some things to help us. Cortez Bram and maybe some of the other receivers. You seen any movement? Cortez there? made two nice. I should have concluded him. Really, he made two nice plays today. He's probably a leading receiver in the scrimmage, yeah. John. So like, I'm I'm glad you asked about him. Um, you know, I'm pleased. You know, I, I went into this uh, spring thinking, you know, we're trying to put our receivers in some pressure situations. Obviously, it's a whole new room, um, which in old days would freak you out in today's world kind of just is what it is. Um, but Devin Carter, you know, after watching him work in the winter, I knew kind of what he was going to be. And I think he's got a chance to even improve on what he was at NC state. Um, and then Cortez, you know, I feel really good exiting as we go into our last week about some of the things he's done. Um, and then we need Jeremiah Aaron, Jay Sean Polk, 
you know, Preston's been really solid again. Uh, Hudson Clements had a nice spring. You know, so we just need some of those guys. Uh, Jarrell Williams, we need some of those guys to keep coming. Okay, anything else? Can you avoid that quote Bob was asking you earlier about the running back catching the ball? Mm -hmm. Is there a split that you like to – hit, I guess, between wide receiver catches, tight end catches, running back catches? Like, is, is there a split that kind of, I guess, if you hit that, you know you've been successful, kind of? Yeah. So, the way we look at it is you got basically five eligibles all the time. And so, you want, not necessarily from a touch, but you'd like for them to be somewhat distributed, right? And where we haven't got as much production out of the tight end position as we'd like to. And so, that's what we got to pick up. And then from a running back perspective, um, you know, I thought Letty, we, we, we got him involved in the pass game. And uh, we fell off that a little bit last year. And we need to get, you know, we got guys that are that have multiple skill sets. And so um, they're good with the ball in their hands. So we've, we've really worked on that this spring. So I do think the, the running backs and the tight ends both will get, will be more of a factor. Um, but try to distribute it between the five. All right, thank you all.